Hi, welcome to Courageous Journeys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Peggy Oliveira. So how often do you should yourself? This is something that comes up all the time in therapy. And it's really quite significant. It may not seem like that big of a deal. You may not even really recognize how often you do it because it's such a common kind of automatic thing that we do, but the impact is quite significant. So if you think about should, it's something that we say really easily. I should do that. I shouldn't have done that. Other people should or shouldn't do something. We do it all the time. And while we do it towards other people, directed at other people, we do it a lot to ourselves. I suspect that most of you watching this, probably you should 20 times a day, at least. You may not be aware that you're using it that often or even at all, but our thoughts are so automatic and they're not typically in our immediate consciousness. So we're not always aware of what we're saying to ourselves. And partly that is because it happens so quickly. Like our minds work at the speed of light. It's like constant thoughts. And one thought leads to another thought to another thought. And I used to think I was the only one who did that, but I know now that that isn't the case. Uh, but so many of the thoughts that we have, those automatic thoughts, those automatic responses to things, they happen without us even being aware much of the time. And of course, most of the things that we're saying to ourselves are not particularly positive most of the time. But when we say should, even when it's something that seems somewhat motivational or positive, it actually has a negative effect on us. Because every time we say should, we're judging ourselves. Literally judging ourselves in that moment. When you think about, I should have done this. I should have done this today and I didn't. Or I shouldn't have done that today. I shouldn't have eaten that cookie. I shouldn't have thought of doing something different. I should have known better. I shouldn't feel that way. I shouldn't want that. Really, we do it all the time. And every time that you say that to yourself, even when you're not conscious of it, it's having an impact on what you believe about who you are and what you are worthy or deserving of. Every time it's reinforcing those core beliefs that are already there. So it's reinforcing the idea that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, that you're not deserving, that you're not capable. Like in the case of food and nutrition, if you feel like you struggle with weight or you struggle with eating well or you have a sweet tooth or a salty tooth or whatever <laughs> every time you say to yourself i shouldn't eat that i shouldn't want it i should be able to do better i should just be able to make up my mind and follow through if you believe that there's something kind of wrong with you that you're not capable of doing that then when you say that to yourself, you're reinforcing that idea. And every time we reinforce an idea that we hold, that is deeply held, that is a, potentially a core belief, every time we reinforce that, even when we're not consciously aware that we're doing it, every time that we reinforce that, it kind of solidifies that idea that we hold on to. And we see that as evidence of that being true. Like if you um, are practicing connecting, I've been talking a lot about connecting lately, and you have some challenges with it, you feel uncomfortable with it, it's not natural for you, which is the case for most people, and you believe that you're unworthy, and then you 
think about connecting, but you don't follow through. And in your mind, you say, oh, I know I should do this. I know it's good for me. I should just be able to do this. I should be able to just make myself do it. Well, when you're doing that in this example, you are reinforcing that you're ultimately not deserving or worthy or capable of that connection. Now, again, you're not consciously going through a whole process here of saying, oh, I'm feeling this way. I'm saying this to myself. This is what it's making me believe. This is why I end up feeling like crap at the end of it. <laughs> you, you don't go through that process on a conscious level, but that's what happens because you're reinforcing that over and over again. And literally every time you say should or shouldn't, there's a judgment. Now, depending on how much healing you've done or how wounded you may have been to begin with, that judgment may, may be somewhat small. It may not play a really significant role in terms of how you ultimately feel at that particular time. It's still reinforcing a belief though, but for some people, Every time they say should, even if they're not consciously aware, they're left feeling like they failed in some way. Because when you're saying I should do that, if you're not doing it, what does that say about you? If you know you should, but you don't, what are you left believing about yourself? How are you left feeling about yourself in that moment? Probably not very good. And when you think about how many times in a day we do this, and it could be about everything in our lives, literally, um, I should have woken up earlier. I should have gone to bed earlier. I should have eaten better. I should have said this or done that. I should have known better. I should do this more often. I shouldn't do that as often. We do it so often and it really does have an impact. It's one of the patterns of thinking in cognitive behavioral therapy that is, is really significant. And I think a lot of people, and I know this was true for me, a lot of people don't think that they really do it that often because it's such an automatic thing. But if you start really paying attention to your thoughts, you'll notice how frequent it shows up and I still do it. So it's not something that we can necessarily just completely eliminate from our, our vocabulary. What's most important is being able to recognize that we're doing it so that we can mitigate the impact on us. So if we're saying to ourselves, I should know better, we can maybe do a little reality testing around that. If we recognize that we're saying that we can say, should I have really known better? Is it reasonable that I wouldn't have known this is how it's going to turn out? Or even if based on experience, you might've expected the same outcome, you can say, okay, maybe I could have known that this is going to be the likely outcome, but does that deserve judgment? Do I deserve to beat myself up about that? And no, you don't. <laughs> um, you might think that you do, but you don't. And this is the next part of what is so important about being able to recognize this. And that is self-compassion. Self-compassion is really the antidote to being, being able to release that judgment, the self-criticism, the shame, ultimately, because so often those shoulds and shouldn'ts, when we say them to ourselves and it's reinforcing those beliefs, it's also often connecting to shame. And when we can instead meet that with self-compassion, the impact isn't there because instead of judgment, we experience compassion, kindness, understanding, or grace if needed, maybe even forgiveness. So instead of self-criticism or judgment towards ourselves, when we can begin to catch that 
and we can practice some aspect of self-compassion and self-compassion is compassion but it is also kindness directed towards ourselves it is understanding directed towards ourselves just like you would understand somebody else and not judge them and it's grace if we screw up in some way being able to create a moment of compassion around that so that there isn't judgment so that we don't just describe or define ourselves as a failure or being unworthy self-compassion really is actually the antidote to a lot of things <laughs> it's such an important part of not only healing it, it plays a really important role in healing it's absolutely necessary but it really also plays a significant role in our ability to feel happy and connected in our lives because we all know better sometimes, right? We all make mistakes. We all do things sometimes that we know we could do better. We may not give it our all all the time and that's okay. There's nothing to judge about that. So we're going to screw up, whatever that might mean. But a lot of the things that you think you're screwing up are not really screwing up. It's normal. It's human. It's being perfectly imperfect because nobody is perfect. But when you have this idea that you should be, I should have done better. I shouldn't let that get to me. With the holidays, I'm doing a whole series on this on social media. With the holidays, there are a lot of shoulds around how you should feel, what you should feel appreciative of, what you should be doing, who you should be spending time with. There's a lot of shoulds right now things that we're putting on ourselves and things that other people and even society puts on us. And I shared a little bit more of that in the video about kind of getting through the holidays. But the amount of time, well, the number of times, I guess, the number of times that we say should or shouldn't to ourselves deeply impacts our sense of self and our sense of being able to feel and trust in being successful in our lives. So I'd like you to, I'd like to encourage you to think about that. Notice, and this is something that takes practice, but notice how often you say to yourself, should. I catch myself doing it quite often. So it's not about completely eliminating it. But when you notice that you're saying should or shouldn't, when you notice it, catch it, and then be able to say to yourself, okay, hold on a second. This does not define who I am. And knowing that this is healthier for me, knowing that this is better for my healing, knowing that um, I'll feel better afterwards even. None of those things make shooting yourself <laughs> a necessity. It's not helpful in the long run. What are some of the shoulds you tend to do? Feeling tends to be a really common one for a lot of people. How we should or shouldn't feel. How often do you try to talk yourself out of what you're feeling? It's really common. But again, every time you do that, you're making yourself wrong for what you're feeling. And there is never a wrong feeling. Even if it's an exaggerated feeling that doesn't quite fit the circumstance, it's not wrong. 
And there's a reason that it's exaggerated. And when we can meet that with compassion, we can diminish some of the energy behind that feeling. So I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the shoulds you do? Are you aware of how often you do it? Practice for a few days and notice and come back and share with me how often you find yourself doing this. It's such an important part of this work and, and really helping us create space to connect with our sense of worthiness and knowing and trusting that we are enough. We don't have to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. We're already enough as we are. And when we should ourselves, it makes us believe that we're not, that we need to keep striving to do better. And as I talked about, self-compassion is such an important part of this. And if you feel like self-compassion might be something beneficial for you, I'd love to encourage you to consider Deeply Rooted. There's a link in the bottom or in the description at the bottom. You can find out more. It's available on any online reseller. You can even go to your local bookstore and ask them to order it if you love your indie bookstore. Um, and it's available internationally. So there's also a lot of other books out there on self-compassion. So whether it's Deeply Rooted or something else, I would encourage you to really consider this. And one of the things that I think I'm going to be doing in January is another workshop for people who have purchased Deeply Rooted. Um, it was such a beautiful experience last time, and I think I want to do it again this after this holiday season. So stay tuned for that as well if you do or if you have purchased Deeply Rooted. So um, I'd love to be able to connect with you there. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to help other people find it as well because we all need a little more self-compassion in our lives. You have so much of it for everybody else. It's time to practice giving it back to yourself. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.